So now that we can take payment from users and charge the credit card, we may want to split up our users into kind of like two groups or multiple groups where we have some are like a free trial users and whereas some other users have already paid for your service and you may want to restrict or display different things depending on who that user is. So today what we're going to do is we're going to set up a page called account that's going to display a different thing depending on who the user is. So you can use this and basically any page you want to set up, you can change the way it is looking depending on who the current user logged in is. All right, before we get into that, I was having some problems yesterday with Apollo. You saw I was having to manually uh, just uh, remove GraphQL from the node modules. There's a better solution to this someone gave in the comments. I love this. Uh, we can set up resolutions. So now uh, Apollo will use GraphQL 14 and now I don't have to go manually remove it from the node modules every time. So I have set this up in my package.json. If you have that problem as well, that's what I'd recommend. So this is a permanent solution, at least for now, until Apollo upgrades the package. And all I did was add this, and then I removed my node modules and reinstalled them, and uh, it's working for me. So let's go ahead and get started on the account page that I talked about. So I'm gonna create a account.tsx under the account. And so on this particular component, I want to step one, find out who the current user is, and then step two, display depending on who that user is. So to find the user, we actually have something already set up for that, and that's our me query. So I'm going to copy what we have in our me view and just paste it in here. So here I'm going to just rename this to account. And then what we are doing on this, if you remember, is we're fetching the user and then we're displaying these two are kind of error cases or if we're loading, we're display nothing. And then we just say uh, data is undefined if we don't get any data. Otherwise, we uh, got some data. So in this case, the user is not logged in because we didn't get a user when we did it. So in this case, I'm just going to change this to a link so we can link them to go log in. So I'm going to say, please log in. And we're going to say to slash log in. So this link is something from uh, React Router DOM. Have the auto import there. All right, so now I wanna check out this link page or this account page, so let's add a route for it. So I'm gonna move basically our payment stuff over to this account page, so I'm gonna get rid of this subscription. So it's called account, and we'll get rid of that. And then when I log in now, I wanna just redirect over to the account page instead of going over to me. All right, so let's give this a try now. So currently I am logged in as c at c.com, but if I wanted to, I could come over here, clear my cookies and refresh the page. And now it's asking me to log in. So I'll go ahead and log in, c at c.com, copy that. And now you notice it's telling me to please log in again. And that's because basically, even though we just logged in, we're caching the user so if the user wasn't logged in we're hitting the cache where they're not logged in so this is going to be actually something we're going to fix in tomorrow's video for now i'm going to ignore caching of the user and we can do that by changing the fetch policy so if i say network only as the fetch policy for this query it's never going to cache it and it's just going to go well it's going to cache it but it's not going to look at the cache so it's going to go directly to the network or directly to the server each time so what that means is we see c at c.com and uh, if I were to do the same thing, clear this, refresh, log in again, we'll see the same user or we'll see the correct user after logging in. All right, so let's take this account page. Uh, we're displaying the correct thing here if we're not logged in. That makes sense, please log in. Now I'm kind of just displaying the email of the user but really I wanna display other stuff. Like let's say uh, for the user that is currently not purchased yet, I wanna display the Stripe checkout for them so they can purchase it. But right now I don't have enough information to know whether the user is a free trial user, whether they've paid or whatnot, because all I have is the ID and the email from our server. And we actually have this information on our server, if you remember, we have a column which we're calling type. So by default, um, we are just setting it to free trial. And then our resolvers over here, when they purchase, so when they create a subscription, um, we are setting the type to paid. 
So now we can, if we send that paid type, or if we send this type back to uh, the client side, they know what type of user that is. So let's add that to our type test over here. I'm just gonna say type, which is a string. And that's pretty much all I really need to add. I now, uh, we're already sending it back when we uh, return it from GraphQL. Like for example, in my resolvers over here, we're returning a user which has the type on it, so we're good. We just now need to ask for it on our client side. So instead of email now, I'm gonna say account, or sorry, type. So now I can say type, and we can see what the type of the user is. Now you'll notice right here, it doesn't exist, and that's because I just need to update my GraphQL types. So I'm gonna say yarn.gentypes. So anytime I come over here and I add things, I'm gonna have to come back over here and do this. So it looks like I have two me queries because we also are using it in this me view over here. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and remove the me view. And I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it as a route because we don't really need it anymore since we're using basically the same thing in our account over here. So let's generate the types again. And looks like that passed. All right, so now, not in our login, our account over here, we should have this type. Now you notice it doesn't always happen right away. Two things to get TypeScript to realize that we just upgrade the types is, I'll usually click on schema types and you'll notice it'll now refresh, it'll reload it. Um, or if you hit command P, it brings up this little window um, and we can say caret and hit TypeScript restart server is another one I use. All right, but let's see who the current user is or the current type. Um, let's hop back over to our server because I think this needs to be restart because we added the type there. But basically what we're going to add next is we're just going to add some if statements. So if the type is equal to a certain type, we're going to display something else. And that's basically all we need to do here. Um, it's asking us to log in again. It's because we added some stuff on our server. So let's go and say cc.com and we'll notice this particular user is paid. So that's great. So now I wanna kind of display some data based on what the user is. So I'm gonna say data.me.type is equal to free trial. If they're a free trial, what I'd like to do is I want them to sign up. So I'm just gonna display this subscribe to user. So subscribe user. Um, and yep, that's coming from right here. So that's just the thing that we set up yesterday that uses Stripe checkout and will actually uh, create a subscription. Now you'll notice uh, right here, we're not the email and the ID we get back from the user. So it's actually not gonna update the type of the user until we refresh. We're gonna talk about that and I'll, you'll see what that means in a second. Uh, and then lastly down here, if data.me.type is equal to paid, uh, is basically what we're doing here and we're going to return just the type. So I guess we could say uh, Thanks for buying our product So now uh, you can kind of display whatever you want on these different conditions But you see this is the basic setup. So we're just gonna check who the current user is um, And then depending on what conditions if they meet a condition We're gonna display different components depending on that and the cool thing about this is uh, as they interact with this page, they might change who their user is um, and that will refresh and re-grab uh, display stuff real time. So what do I mean by all this? Well, okay, so that says, thanks for buying our product. Let's go ahead and register a user that is not uh, already purchased it. So a at a.com, register, go ahead and log in. So this particular user has not purchased it yet, so it's asking me to pay. Let's go ahead and pay. So a at a.com, I'll get rid of that. And let's go to test mode, pick a credit card. Um, let's do a discover card this time. And go ahead and pay. And now what's gonna happen is I have a new user, but you noticed it's still asking me to pay with the credit card even though I just paid, right? So we kind of want to solve that and we want after you pay to be taken, should be displaying something new on this account page. So how do we do that? Well, the nice thing about Apollo is it can actually auto update stuff. So what happened was 
in our subscribe at he, over here. Um, after the subscription is done, we get a user back and we get this ID and we get this email, but none of those actually change. The thing that changes is this thing called type. So the type changes and when the type changes, we want to then display that, hey, thanks for paying. So now that we request for type to be sent back, it's actually gonna auto update the cache. So when we create a subscription, the user that we get back is gonna have a type equal to paid. And so then it's gonna look up the, the user with that ID um, automatically and upgrade the type. So what does that all mean? Well, let's see it in action. So now that we added that, I can say b at b.com, log them in, now pay with my card, copy that, um, And, oh man, it did, oh, there we go. I was gonna say, I was expecting it to update and it, it did update. Uh, I always forget that Stripe just takes a second to actually process it. So unlike before, it didn't just stay on the button page. So you saw that after the request finished, it did take a second, but when it was finished, we get a thanks for buying our product. So it actually automatically updates the user and we know that the user now has paid for it and we can display it. So now if I refresh the page, of course, and I come back to it, it's still gonna display that because we're fetching the user and that's where our user is. So that is one way to set up, set this up. So in this case, what I'm doing is I am just displaying a different component per each chunk, but I might wanna, instead of displaying a different component, just redirect them to another page. So that's a very possible thing you wanna do. And the way we can do that is by the, using the redirection tag from React Router. So let's say instead of saying, please log in, I just wanna take them directly to that page. So I can do that by saying redirect, uh, redirect. And, I, and this actually doesn't need to have anything here. So I can just say redirect like that. So that comes from React Router DOM again. So now what happens is let's clear my cookie. So come over to application, clear that. And by the way, I don't know if I showed this before, but the way I'm getting to this is through application and then cookies and then the name of it. So I'm gonna refresh the page and you'll notice it takes me directly to login. So I can try going to account again and we just get redirected each time. So that's something you could do and it doesn't just have to be for the login, right? So I could create a separate page that's like um, paid users.tsx. So over here, um, we're gonna say paid users, thanks for paying, right? And so we can have a totally different route for this. Um, come on, routes, and call it paid users, and we can say paid users. And then over here uh, at the bottom of account, we could just redirect them over there if we wanted to, right? So I could say redirect, to slash paid users. And we could see this in action. So now we'll log in with cnc.com and let's just copy and paste. Oops. So now you'll notice what, what it took me directly to paid users. So what you didn't see is it re took me to account and then redirected to paid users. You can also just type in account here. Now it takes me to this page. So you have a couple different options of how you can uh, change what the user is seeing. You can redirect them to new pages or you can actually just display different data on that current route that they are on. Um, I particularly like just kind of displaying it in the route itself. Um, the other thing about this is we've set up paid users over here. So if I come over to paid users, anyone can come over to paid users. You may wanna add some restrictions on this page as well. And the way you do it is the same way we did it over here. So you would just fetch the current user and then depending on who the current user is, you would handle it different ways. So that is how you handle different users, just fetch the data using the me query and then display different data.